Good afternoon and welcome to a special Angry Bulletin here on the Angry Astronaut. This is an unexpected announcement that came down today just a few short months after a significant setback for RFA and for Saks Avord after the destruction of the first test booster for RFA-1, the primary flagship rocket for this company, and another setback for Saxavord, given the fact that the primary customer that they always intended to use from the beginning of the construction of this spaceport, that is to say, ABL Systems that had originally been granted the primary launch pad at Saxavord and also a primary space at their integration facility. Well, it turns out that Saxavord has lost ABL as a customer permanently, it would appear, because ABL has transitioned away from orbital launch services and instead seems to be focusing on things like missiles now. So with the setback from RFA and with the exit of ABL, which by the way was a Lockheed Martin subsidiary with deep pockets, well, it seemed like Saxavord was going to be in some very deep trouble. And then, lo and behold, they pick up a new customer, a customer who was supposed to be building a competing spaceport in Scotland, and now, like so many other launch providers in Europe, have decided to go with the pre eminent, the first choice in launch facilities in Western Europe, Saxavord Spaceport. And they're bringing bigger rockets with them. <laughs> Now, I'd like to say that the biggest and most compelling reason that Saxavord is the best spaceport in Western Europe is because of how painfully beautiful this region of the world is. Every time I go to Shetland, I continue to be absolutely floored by the stunning beauty of this place. But of course, beauty is not the most compelling reason to build a spaceport. There has to be other reasons, other factors that contribute to making it an ideal spaceport for launch facilities. And its location, as far as its latitude is concerned, that is a big advantage. And also, the peninsula that it is located on is ideal for a variety of different reasons. For one thing, it's easy to seal off this peninsula for security purposes, ensuring the safety of the customer's launch facilities, but also, since it's surrounded by water on three sides, this offers a wide variety of different trajectories and also a very, very good safety factor for launch facilities as well. If a rocket goes errant, goes off course, there's lots and lots of places to splash it down, to terminate the flight, to set off flight termination charges or whatever without jeopardizing anybody in the process. This peninsula is completely isolated from the inhabited regions on Unst. As a matter of fact, I would suspect that a lot of the population of this island didn't even know that there was an anomaly that took place with the RFA booster, given the fact that the RFA rockets are not enormous starship size rockets or anything like that. So really a lot of safety and also minimal impact to the environment. I released a video about this topic explaining how well this organization collaborates with environmental organizations and governmental regulations in the region to ensure that there are no problems whatsoever on that front with launches or the high launch cadence that's expected to eventually take place here. So lots of advantages for customers to eliminate any potential hassles from security to environmental opposition and also a large number of launch pads to choose from. There are three currently and there will eventually be five so you don't have to build your own launch facilities and you don't have to worry about your own integration facilities either because 
They have their own integration facilities at Saxaford as well, with enough space for two customers to be integrating payloads into rockets simultaneously. RFA, I think, wanted to take the entire integration facility for themselves, but Saxaford, wanting to make sure that they didn't put all of their eggs into one basket, left the facility open for any customers to use as needed. Now, obviously, the facility was not completed at the time that I visited it a couple of months ago, but a lot of progress has been made since, including the addition of a functional clean room that RFA was in the midst of using to integrate payloads into the fairing of their RFA-1 rocket prior to the anomaly. Although, incidentally, the upper stage of that rocket is still intact, as are the payloads, as is the fairing. All of that is still okay, and I am very, very confident that RFA will be ready to launch sometime early next year with a second booster. That being the case, though, it was very important for Saxavord to secure additional customers and to secure them quickly, and they got it from a very unexpected source. The company called Orbex, another UK company that was originally intending to build their own competing launch facility, although a launch facility that was supposed to be exclusively used by Orbex, a location called Sutherland in Northern Scotland, well, that was their plan for years invested a significant amount of time in getting all of the necessary permits, overcoming the environmental concerns, getting range licenses worked on, all of that. And now at this point, surprisingly, Orbex has announced that they are putting all of that on hold and that they're going to move their launch facilities out to Saxonford. Orbex is unquestionably one of the most innovative emerging launch providers in the United Kingdom, indeed in all of Europe, because they believe so strongly in reusability and on minimal impact to both the environment on Earth and in space. As you may have noticed during this advertisement, they intend to use fuels that are going to contribute far less to the carbon footprint that they intend to create with every launch, but also it's a reusable rocket with a reusable first stage and a second stage designed to deorbit itself. The intention is to put no more into space than was there originally with every launch. Now, I'm not entirely certain as to how they intend to achieve that, but my guess is they're going to be using the upper stage or kick stage of this rocket to deorbit space junk or defunct satellites in the same way that Skyrora is intending to use their upper stage as a space tug as well. But the news gets even more exciting than that because Orbex, like Rocket Lab, has realized that sticking to micro-launchers alone is not going to work in today's highly competitive climate. And so they have announced that in conjunction with millions of euros that we, they have recently received from the European Space Agency and also from Danish investors, that they are going to be working on medium-sized rockets as well. Now, what mid-range launcher may actually mean in terms of payload, I don't know, but it's a definite improvement, a definite step up from the types of rockets that we've been talking about launching from Saxavord up to this point. An extremely exciting development, and I am trying to get more details about this, although it had been rumored that Orbex had been working on upgrading their capability, that they were moving up market, so to speak, in terms of their capabilities out of necessity. And it seems that now that a public announcement has been made about that, Saxavord is going to be going up in the world, if you'll pardon the pun, when it comes to the types of launch providers that are going to be operating out of this facility. And once again, it's not restricted to Orbex and RFA. In addition to that, organizations like Skyrora, another UK launch provider, they're intending to launch next year from Saxavord, and also High Impulse out of Germany that's already carried 
carried out suborbital launches in Australia. They intend to launch in 2025 from Saxavord as well. And since Frank and Debbie Strang, the founders of Saxavord, started this spaceport out with a launch provider agnostic philosophy, I think this has ensured the long-term survival of this facility, regardless of what happens in the launcher industry. There's always going to be emerging launch providers in Europe that are going to see the advantage of this facility and all the services it has to offer, together with its perfect location for polar satellite deployment. And now that Saxavord's customers are moving decidedly up market with orbit Bex's recent announcement and also RFA's intention of building a larger type of launcher than the RFA-1 rocket is going to be, and also, of course, PLD Space in Spain announcing a wide variety of much heavier rockets than they were originally talking about launching, I really believe that European spaceports are on their way to becoming serious competitors with the United States. If for no other reason, there are so many satellite providers in Europe that really don't want to contribute to the carbon footprint of the world by shipping their payloads across the Atlantic when they don't have to. And Saxavord, in spite of its recent setbacks, I think is going to serve as an ideal facility to spearhead Europe's new entry into the launch industry. I'll keep you up to date on everything Thing happening with this new development and other developments in Europe and elsewhere. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal. All the details are in the description and until next time, stay angry about space.